What's up, peers, and welcome back to the World Crypto Network. Here, continuing our uh, well unbagging and setup series of the one and only cold card wallet, especially Mark II. Uh, so this will be part of the hopefully very long playlist here that we will build up uh, of the cold card wallet. Already five videos in here. Uh, so if you like that stuff, uh, leave a like. Of course. We will continue today after uh, we have set our unboxed or unbagged <laughs> the bag here and we have now ripped apart the temper evident uh, little seal here uh, that now proves that this was actually opened. Uh, we got the, which one is this one here? Clicky buttons, yes. Uh, and of course, also the cold card sticker that was in there and our Minomic Seed backup. And now today we will continue with the guide here uh, at coldcardwallet.com slash docs slash quick. And we will start with powering up the device. And again, the really cool thing here with the cold card wallet is that you can actually set it up with a regular power plug. Okay, so I, I will have that here plugged in uh, right behind the camera. And uh, I will now plug in for the very first time, oh, I'm so excited, the power cable to the cold card. And let's see what actually will be said then. And it's in. It's verifying right here the build. Uh, and then it's also now showing the green light uh, that, oh, yes, it is genuine. Oh, and the first time I can actually click a button when it's powered on. By using this product, you're accepting our terms of service terms of sale and use. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, it works. It works. Look at that. Clicky, 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 clicky buttons. Beautiful. Read the full document at https slash slash coldcardwallet.com slash legal. Press OK uh, to accept the terms and to continue. Um, so actually, right, we were thinking yesterday about uh, how much actually is being showed here on the screen. And uh, now it's clear it is actually five lines uh, of text. Uh, so here two up there, one empty line and two down low. Uh, so five lines of text, that is quite nice. Um, I will press now the check mark and very cool. It now says uh, version or here number Z000, uh, if it's focusing. Come on, is it? Will it? Will it focus? I hope. Uh, yeah, somewhat here. Uh, Z003130. Uh, uh, and we can verify this exact number on here. And as you will see, it's the exact same, right? Uh, so now we know that actually this bag has not been tampered with and that this hardware right here has in the hardware secure module the exact same serial number as the bag has. That is very, very nice. Uh, so again, just the shipping alone of this is really, really smart. Your new cold card should have arrived in a sealed in a bag with the above number. Please take a moment to confirm the number and look uh, for any signs of tampering. Well, we've looked for signs of tampering already. That was clear yesterday, right? But now we have clearly tampered with it. Uh, and yes, Z0003130 uh, is the correct uh, well, the correct bag here and, and the correct uh, hardware belonging to that bag. So very nice. No tampering since it left the shipping, uh, the, the factory. So take a picture and contact support at coinkite.com if you have any concerns. Well, uh, we do not. This is actually a very legit device. Oh, I, I cannot tell you how nice it is to have real buttons and to click them and it works. And this is beautiful. I love it. Pressing OK now. Very cool. We can now um, choose a pin code and that would then go into the, the uh, continuous setup. We can go into advanced. We can check back on well, the back number. Um, so let's first look into advanced. Um, we can view the identity. We can upgrade the firmware. We can perform a self-test. Uh, we can be a developer or we can secure a logout. Um, let's quickly... Oh, okay. So very nice. For the uh, identity, it shows, now I'll just read it uh, other than showing it to you now. It says the master key fingerprint, uh, which is currently, of course, 000, right? Uh, because we haven't yet set one up. 
the USB serial number here is also a hexadecimal code. Uh, the extended master key is also none yet, well, because we haven't set it up. And it still shows the shipping number uh, right in here. Uh, so very nice, we can now uh, triple check even afterwards that this is actually the correct shipping number. Very cool. Um, we could upgrade the firmware. I don't think we need to do that. We could perform uh, a self-test, which the self-test destroys all the settings uh, on other profiles, uh, not the seed itself. Uh, and it requires a micro SD, and it might have other consequences. Recommended only for the factory. Uh, so since we are not the factory, we, will, we should not do a self-test. Uh, so I will exit out of this menu here, uh, and it says aborting. Okay, so we just aborted uh, the self-test. Uh, we'll also not go into the developer mode. Um, but also cool, it has a secure lockout, uh, which then makes uh, triple checks here that all the secrets are back into the secure uh, enclave and uh, that no yeah, private information uh, is left on the clear uh, thing here on, uh, on the hardware. Uh, so if we would want to log out, this might be the correct way of doing this. But I think it might just be enough to plug out the cable. But well, if it says secure logout, I guess it's more secure. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, now we can go up here and choose a pin. Uh, let's actually do that. Um, choose a pin. Pick the main wallet pin code now. But uh, be more clever. Uh, <laughs> Be more clever, but an example, one, two, three, slash, four, five, six, seven. It has two parts. The prefix, one, two, three, actually, let me show that here. So it has two prefix. Uh, the, the one, two, three is the prefix, and the four, five, six, seven is the suffix, okay? One pre before, suf after. Uh, continuing the reading here. Each part must be between two to six digits long, okay? And of course, the longer, the better. And the total length can be as long as 12 digits, right? Six plus six is 12, smart math. Uh, the prefix part determines the anti-phishing words you will see each time you log in. Okay, so that is the really cool thing. Um, for you first type in your prefix pin, okay? The first six digits, one, two, three, four, five, six. But you do not yet type in the other part of the pin, the last part, the suffix. But after you type in only the first six digits, you will see two seemingly random words. And they are somehow calculated here on the secure module, uh, which then means that uh, if it's the same two words uh, after you type in the pin, you can be pretty certain that this is the same device that you're still holding in your hands. But if you type in the correct pin, but all of a sudden, two different words uh, show up on the screen, then you know that something is up and that someone might have switched out uh, your device here uh, and is now trying to fish for the rest of your pin, okay? Uh, so the rest of the pin right here will be the other six digit numbers. So only type in the second part of your pin if the words are actually correct uh, and being shown here. Uh, really, really important. And again, really smart design. Because even if someone then tries to give you a fake cold card and you want to type in your PIN, they only get the prefix at most, right? Because then you will see, oh, different type of words. And okay, this then means, damn it, I, I messed up, right? So I need to make sure uh, that I triple check if this is actually the correct one, right? And I do not continue typing in the PIN. So your new pin protects access to this cold card device, and it's not uh, a factor in that wallet's seed or private keys, okay? Really important. This is not a encryption of your monomic seed that we will write down here in just a bit, but this pin only encrypts this device, okay? Uh, so this is similar to your pin on your phone, right? It's, it's just, it gives you access uh, to all the stuff here. Uh, and of course, this means it gives you access to the secrets on this device. But for example, if I have 24 words of unencrypted monomics here in my backup paper, uh, then I do not need to have the pin in order to get back uh, or in order to use these coins, right? The, the unencrypted master monomic seed of 24 words is enough to spend the coins fully, okay? So the device pin encrypts the device, but it does not 
encrypt the monomic seed. So uh, quite classical, uh, pen and paper, um, take out a dice, right? Roll that dice a couple times and then type or write down the numbers uh, that you actually want to have here for your uh, pin. Uh, really nice and again, uh, really important to have six and six digits uh, for both your monomic, or, or sorry, for, for both the prefix and the suffix uh, of your pin. Uh, I will not show you my pin uh, because, well, it's mine. <laughs> and although I will reset uh, the wallet afterwards, uh, might as well do it right here and, and show you the best security practices. So actually, when you do this, make sure no one's lurking behind you, right? Make sure that there's there, no camera, um, probably even no microphone, right? Because a really sophisticated attacker might hear the scratching of the pen on the paper and then somehow guess uh, which pin you're here actually using. Um, so, again, be really careful. This is your money. And uh, yeah, just don't mess around with here. Um, okay, now I can actually enter the prefix. Very nice. Uh, and I will do so now. So, 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 so. Okay. And now it shows me two English words. Uh, again, I will not show you them. I will show you in, in just a second a different one. Uh, but now I will write these down. Okay. Very nice words. I always like uh, the oracle of randomness <laughs> that Bitcoin uh, here puts you in touch with. Very nice. Um, and now enter the rest of the pin, uh, the, the suffix, right? The last part. Uh, is it focusing? Oh, this autofocus is horrible. <laughs> Um, or you could also cancel and continue, okay? So typing in all the rest of the pin. Okay, triple check that is actually correct, right? Uh, and now it asks you to type in again the prefix and suffix to make sure that you did not uh, make a mistake here by, by importing that. Uh, so again, take your time with this, right? This is nothing to hurry. Um, so, and now after I've typed in the digits and I press OK, it now shows me uh, these two words. And the two words are exactly the same as I've seen them before. Thus, I know uh, that the, the prefix was correct and that this is still the same hardware. Uh, very nice. So I can say yes and type in the rest of the pin. Okay. And now it says saving. Uh, if you can see this right here, it's now saving this probably on the secure enclave. So really cool. Now I can generate a new wallet. I can import an existing wallet uh, or go into help, into advanced uh, and settings. Okay, so well, uh, generating a new wallet is probably the best practice, right? Especially if this is a new device and you want to get going from this here right from the start. Uh, well, then this means, right, that you uh, will draw some new randomness here on this device, uh, which will then generate a seed, the master secret. And then this little computer here will also calculate the monomic uh, of this seed uh, and display it to you. And of course, the monomic are 24 English words. Uh, very nice. Uh, and that will make sure that, that you actually, uh, were, that you have a good, strong password for your Bitcoin. You could also import an existing wallet, and we might do this in the future just to show you how this works, um, by uh, kind of like you have, to, you have to control with these arrows up and down until you hit the right letter, right? So A, B, C, D, till Z, uh, and you click through these here, uh, and thus it's kind of cumbersome uh, to import a monomic with a keypad, right? But it's absolutely doable, uh, and although it might take a couple minutes, I mean, be patient, decrease your time preference, right? Um, let's actually see what is in help here. Um, eight is uh, down, up, five is up, okay is the check mark, X is to uh, cancel and go back, uh, zero is go to top. Uh, cool. Um, more on our website at coldcardwallet.com. Just some basic help. Okay, let's look into the advanced tab. Uh, here again, we see the same as before, uh, before we typed in the pin in the advanced tab. We can verify the identity that shows you all the, uh, the secrets uh, or, or the fingerprints uh, on this device. You can verify the firmware or you can upgrade the firmware rather. You can perform a self-test. 
uh, and you can go into the developer mode uh, or for the secure lockout, okay? But we don't really need to do this. So what we will actually do now in this video is to generate the Minomic uh, and, well, the seed and Minomic. So we will click on new wallet and it's now already here showing that it is generating, right? And it says now record these 24 secret words. And it shows the first three already. Again, I, I will not show them to you uh, because, well, they are mine. Uh, so that, that is going to be the really, really boring part. So guess what? I will actually pause the recording quickly to write this down so you don't have to watch me write down stuff on paper. Too boring. Okay, and now after you have written down your 24 words, double and triple check them, right? Really, really make sure that these are the correct backups and go over them at least twice. I mean, take the time. It will only be a couple seconds, but this is your money and uh, there is no one to run to. Uh, it's your responsibility, uh, so make sure. Uh, and especially right here with the cold card, there will be a test. Uh, so we will see exactly how this will be now asked. So it asks, word 14, uh, is it either version one? Is it the word number two or is it word number three? And right here it shows three different options that, that it could be, right? Uh, and you then select uh, which one it actually is. So this is, in my opinion, a really intuitive way of, of asking um, and making sure that this is actually correct. Uh, you don't have to type in the entire word here uh, on the keypad. Uh, which would be very difficult, uh, but rather you just have to check, okay, word 14, which one is it? Uh, okay, for me, it would be word number one, right? So I just type in word number one. Word six, is it version one, two, or three? Let's see. Huh? It is version two. So I type version two. Word 15 is mm -hmm, the second one, perfect. Word 11 is this one, yes. Uh, 16 is this one, okay, uh, and so on. Okay, and then after you have actually verified every single word, uh, it says applying, uh, and then it, it will finish the entire setup. Uh, so that, again, really, really nice. Um, it's, it's easy with this to verify every single word, right, by just clicking one, two, or three, but it still makes sure that you have every single word back up. And again, this entire process takes 10 minutes at most. So do it and do it right, okay? Uh, don't cheat here. Uh, you're only going to hurt yourself. Uh, and now we are in the main menu. Uh, but peers, this we will then explore in the entire next video. Um, maybe a couple more things, um, actually. Uh, wait, can I? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One second. Um, yes, okay, so what we can actually do uh, here with uh, the second point right in the menu, we can have a passphrase, right, uh, which then uh, is kind of the 25th word, uh, and it will be used to encrypt your monomic. Uh, and it will give out, again, 24 words that you can write down on something like this one here, right? Uh, like a just a regular piece of paper. And that will help you to keep a backup that is encrypted. Because right now what you have backed up is the clear text monomic. And therefore, right, uh, anyone who has this piece of paper has full access to all the Bitcoin in this hierarchical deterministic wallet. And so a passphrase is very, very much recommended for backups. Because then even if someone steals your backup, they don't know anything, right? Uh, because you still, or because then right, they, you still need to have the word uh, or the secret that will encrypt, uh, decrypt your monomic here. Uh, so we will go into passphrase and it says here, you may add a passphrase to your BIP39 seed words. This creates an entirely new wallet for every possible passphrase, okay? So every time a different passphrase is chosen, a complete new wallet is generated. And the attacker does not know if he has typed in a correct password. It will just show an empty wallet, right? And for every wallet, there will not be an error. It will just be a completely different master secret. And that's a completely different, uh, a completely different well, addresses and keys. 
by default, the cold card uses an empty string as the passphrase. And, well, not too secure, right? <laughs> On the next menu, you can enter a passphrase by selecting individual letters, uh, choosing from the word list, which is recommended, or by typing numbers. Okay, so three different ways that a backup here can be imported. Um, either you type it indirectly, right? So you choose letter C, E, L, and so on, uh, or you choose a couple words from the word list. Uh, so right there is, I think, 1,024 words on the BIP39 monomic word list. And you just choose a random number uh, of that. Well, the cold card does for you. And because it's a password manager doing that, that would be very nice. And you can also select numbers, which are, well, first, much, much easier here to type into the cold card. Uh, and if it's long enough, oh, well, I guess it's secure as well. Um, but I personally like to have rather long passphrases. Well, at least more than one word. Uh, so I might just uh, do a diceware, right? Roll a couple dice and, and then get a passphrase out of that uh, to make sure that I have a decent and, and pseudo ra or, or actually like really random uh, passphrase, right? Um, so, so that really helps uh, to, to make sure that the passphrase itself uh, is then actually secure and encrypted. Um, but now for this setup, uh, actually, let's keep reading. Please write down the fingerprint of all your wallets so you can confirm when you've got the right passphrase. If you are writing down a passphrase as well, it's okay to put them together. There is no way for uh, the cold card to know if your password is correct and if you have it or if you have it wrong you will be looking at an empty wallet, right? Okay, so uh, again, um, if you have only the fingerprint of the wallet, which is a rather short hexadecimal code, then you can have the password right next to it on a piece of paper. And this then you can easily see, okay, this is that wallet and this is the password for that wallet, okay? But an attacker does not know the uh, encrypted ciphertext a monomic for that wallet because he only knows the fingerprint. But of course, it's very, very stupid to keep your encrypted monomic, right, the ciphertext, next to the decrypting password on the same piece of paper. Because then if the attacker has that, well, he might as well have just written down the clear text. So it's very much recommended to have a different uh, or a different backup mechanism, either paper or a sheet of metal or whatever, in order then to, to generate uh, or, or to back up your secret and your passphrase. Uh, okay. Uh, to start uh, or X to go back or press two to hide this message forever. Uh, well, no, we don't want to hide the message. We actually want to do this now. Uh, so we can edit the passphrase. We can add a word. We can add a number. We can clear all or we can apply uh, and cancel. Um, so actually, because I just want to experience how this actually works, we can add a word, uh, just one single word. Um, and uh, we can, oh, okay, very nice. Uh, so now here uh, it shows, right, a, uh, all the letters in the alphabet, N, O, P, Q, R, and so on. Uh, and you can scroll through them and we'll type in the word that you actually want to type in. Uh, so let's see, which one is it for me? Um, and then if you, uh, oh, okay. And then, so for example, if I type in O, uh, it shows all the other words uh, that are still there. So it would be uh, for here, oak uh, would be just a three letter word. And then there are a couple two letter words like OB that would then continue or OC. There's odor or OF, oil, okay. Like a bunch of different words that could be chosen. Um, Okay, let's uh, take this one. Again, always write this stuff down. Very important. Um, uh -huh. And then it, oh, it even provides different ways of spelling it. Uh, either uh, all with lower cases, uh, with the first letter capitalized, with everything capitalized, with a space in between, 
Um, so you can really, uh, yeah, uh, do a bunch of cool stuff with this. Cool. Um, and now we have added one word as the passphrase. And now I could press on apply. And well, it's working. <laughs> okay, above is the master key fingerprint of the new wallet. Press X to abort and keep editing the passphrase uh, or press OK to use this as a new wallet. Um, so the fingerprint here uh, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight uh, letters or numbers in hexadecimal code. Uh, so very nice. I will write that down as well. OK. Uh, and now I will press OK. Uh, and this has now uh, given me uh, a both the, the encrypted word, right, uh, or the encryption word and the fingerprint. And in, uh, oh, uh, in advanced here, uh, I could then back up the system, verify backup. Ha ha. Um, okay, well, in the, in the backup, we will talk about in detail uh, in one of the future videos. And now, one thing that I would still like to cover here uh, for the monomic part is how you can actually uh, back this up. Because, well, of course, you can take a piece of paper, right, and, and write it on that. But, well, piece of paper, burn, right, and then it's gone. Uh, if water gets on it, then it's gone as well. Uh, if electric shocks go through it, then it's gone as well. Uh, or then if... Uh, well, what is what else? Like, oh yeah, just decays after a while. Just water, uh, um, not water, but paper actually erodes after a while. Uh, so there are some other options how you can actually use steel in order to back up your monomics. And you can buy very expensive for like 50, 100 bucks, uh, crypto steel or, or, or other pre-packaged um, like steel cases that you then get stamped letters. Uh, already, uh, and you can then arrange these stamped letters in a way that they uh, represent your uh, monomic words, right? But I would say really expensive and something like, I don't know, it just feels weird. Then you have a bunch of the empty letters lying around that you no longer need. And so what I got actually for Eastern is this right here. These are metal stamps, which have the entire uh, or the entire alphabet uh, as well, then, uh, in another set, um, uh, the numbers as well. And so, for example, this here is the pin for S, right? Uh, and it's a rather long like piece of metal, uh, six millimeters wide, uh, made in Germany. Uh, and with this, you can actually go on some high-quality steel, uh, like a thin piece of metal, and you put, down, you put this thing down, and then you hammer it with a hammer, and it will imprint uh, the actual letter on the steel. Uh, and then it's water resistant, it's fire resistant, it's corrosion resistant, it's shock resistant, all the good things, right? And metal is, I think, the best way to back up your monomic seats. And once you have this, like I think they cost 15 bucks, might even get them cheaper somewhere. Uh, and you can make unlimited amounts uh, of backups. Uh, and a, a sheet of like, good solid steel, um, pr pretty easy to get, uh, I would say. Uh, so very, very nice to have that uh, and to, keep, to use that as, or to write down or to stamp down your monomic backup words. And of course, if that is the encrypted, very, very cool. Uh, so yeah, I, I really like that. Uh, lots of cool things that you can do with this. And I guess this is really, um, yeah, this is really the pretty much everything that I wanted to cover. Well, actually, one little thing that, that I might still add for clarification is that you, in the very first step, right, you write down your monomic seed uh, that is generated here. Uh, and then in the second step, right, after we have written this down, we then added a passphrase. And so what this does is that if you have only the monomic words, right, and you do not have the, uh, the, the password to them, uh, then you have a different wallet. So you can still keep your 24-word backup from the original thing. Uh, but then you, if you, ha you can have somewhat different uh, passwords for the same monomic, and that will lead you to a bunch of different uh, 
bunch of different things for your uh, or addresses that you can then manage your your money. Uh, so again, it it doesn't give you out a separate set of 24 words, but it just is a additional password that then leads with the same words to different keys. Um, and yeah, I, I hope uh, that you, you learned something here uh, and I hope that this was a value to you. Again, it was here a video of the very awesome uh, cold card wallet. Uh, let me see that I can get here on the World Crypto Network. Uh, and of course, a bunch of videos here uh, coming and continuing to coming out. Uh, so stay tuned. And of course, there is still the ongoing giveaway. So if you are a open source entrepreneur uh, and you support a open source project uh, in some regard, somehow, somewhere, somewhere, uh, then you, and you tell us why exactly you need your hardware wallet uh, and why this is so important and why you keep on working in Bitcoin, well then reach out and you might win your hands uh, on some very clicky buttony cold card wallet. Piers, as always, thank you very much here for joining me today and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.